Today is Tuesday, November 19th. Will President Trump testify in the impeachment inquiry? It's possible what he's now saying about the request. Plus, a royal family member's questionable interview, Ford's first electric vehicle, and explaining Google Maps' new local guides. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. It's a packed day of public testimonies in the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. Four people are set to testify before lawmakers today, and almost all of them were on that July phone call where President Trump asked Ukraine's leader to do him a favor and investigate some of his political rivals. And this means these witnesses have firsthand knowledge of that call that prompted this impeachment investigation. One of the people testifying is Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, a decorated war veteran and the National Security Council's top specialist on Ukraine. USA Today reports he says he was really concerned about the phone call between Trump and Ukraine's leader and even reported it. So we'll see what details he provides today. His testimony kicks things off at 9 a.m. Eastern time. He's followed by Jennifer Williams, a State Department official and an aide to Vice President Pence, and Kurt Volker, the former U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, and last up, Tim Morrison, the former top Russia and Europe expert on the National Security Council. His public testimony could be a bit different. While he has voiced concerns, he's also said he didn't think President Trump's action was improper. Then five more people are supposed to testify tomorrow and Thursday, so we'll be keeping you updated. But here's a witness who could get the most attention of all. President Trump himself. Trump tweeted that even though he's done nothing wrong, he'll strongly consider providing written testimony to get Congress focused again. So not live and in person, but his written answers would still be under oath. We'll see if and when he might follow through. And speaking of written testimony, that's what Trump provided during the Russia investigation. He wouldn't talk in person with special counsel Robert Mueller at the time, but he did give written responses to questions. Now The Hill reports House Democrats are investigating whether he lied in those written answers. Keep in mind, any lying under oath could help Democrats build a case for impeachment. So will they be able to prove anything? There is much more to come. Stay tuned. The U.S. is rolling back four decades of policy when it comes to Israel. CBS News reports the Trump administration is now giving the OK to Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Remember, that's an area that Palestinians have hoped to have as part of a future Palestinian state. And for years, the U.S. has said that Israeli settlements in the West Bank are inconsistent with international law. But Israel disagrees. And now U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's announcement is giving a boost to Israel's side. Pompeo said calling the settlements illegal hasn't moved the peace process forward. Fox News says there probably won't be any immediate changes from this, but it does send a clear message, one that Israeli's prime minister welcomed and Palestinian leaders condemned, saying the U.S. has lost its credibility to be part of a peace process. Also of note, within hours of the announcement, the State Department issued a travel alert to Americans who plan to go to Jerusalem, the West Bank, or the Gaza Strip, saying Americans and U.S. facilities could become targets in the fallout. A member of the British royal family is facing more fallout and bad PR after trying to explain himself in a BBC interview. Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Duke of York, spoke publicly for the first time about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. And from what the British press is saying, it did not go well. Remember, Epstein is the wealthy convicted sex offender who was facing new charges of sex trafficking of underage girls when he was found dead in a jail cell. Well, Prince Andrew tried to explain his friendship with Epstein and answer why he stayed at Epstein's place in the past. He just called it convenient. And as for Epstein being a sex offender, he used the word unbecoming. Prince Andrew is also denying allegations that he had sex with a 17-year-old, saying he doesn't remember meeting the teen, though there is a picture of them together. And a separate note about Epstein's case back in the U.S., CNBC reports two correctional officers who were supposed to be guarding him in jail when he reportedly took his own life are expected to face criminal charges this week for falsifying prison records. Prosecutors say they didn't check on Epstein as often as they claimed. American Express wants you to be able to use its credit cards in more places and, of course, collect more fees. So The Wall Street Journal says it's prepared to pay businesses big bucks to make it happen. American Express is apparently offering sign-on bonuses to some businesses that don't take the cards right now. 
We're talking up to half a million dollars, so they'll accept American Express credit cards. The journal says that's almost unheard of in the industry. The company hopes to catch up to rivals Visa and MasterCard. Of course, credit card companies make money from the interest they charge consumers, but they also collect fees from the businesses who accept their cards. All right, let's take a quick break now for today's sponsor, Gino Palette. If you're like me, you can get a bit overwhelmed by all the nutritional advice out there, but the reality is we're all a bit different, and what works for one person may not work well for another. That's why I was interested in Gino Palette. It analyzes your genetics to help you eat healthier. So using a DNA analysis, it'll tell you your optimal intake levels for 24 hours of things like carbs, fats, and specific nutrients. For example, I learned my body needs more folate than others, and it was also spot on that I can drink coffee without feeling jittery. To learn more and get your report, go to genopalette.com. And if you've already provided your DNA to something like Ancestry, you can just upload that same data from them to get your report in just a few quick steps. So use the code NEWSWORTHY for 20% off your report. That's genopalette.com, spelled G-E-N-O-P-A-L-A-T-E, genopalette.com, with the code NEWSWORTHY for 20% off your report. Now back to the news. Ford's first all-electric vehicle is here. It's called the Mustang Mach-E SUV. The Verge says it has lots of different options for people to choose from, including one that can travel up to 300 miles on a full battery. The Mach-E has a price tag starting just under $44,000. But Ford was quick to point out the customers are still eligible to get a $7,500 federal tax credit. Right now, you can pre-order the SUV with a $500 deposit, but it will still be a while before it's actually in your driveway. Ford says deliveries will not start until late 2020. And some versions of the car won't go on sale until 2021. And of course, there's competition. CNBC reports the Tesla Model Y is expected to be very similar to the Mach-E with the same pricing, performance specifications, and battery range. But Tesla's CEO Elon Musk actually seemed to welcome the Mach-E on Twitter, saying electric cars are the future. Google Maps is testing out a social networking feature where you can follow so-called local guides. They're basically other users who choose to post photos, review businesses, answer questions, and check facts on Google Maps for a certain city. The goal is for local guides to help you have the best experience in a new place. TechCrunch says users will be able to follow the local guides by clicking a new follow button on users' profile pages, though some say this will be crowdsourced advice from regular people not professional critics or reviewers, so the advice could be hit or miss. And speaking of Google, today's the day Google launched its new cloud-based gaming service called Stadia. Yahoo Finance says it's a platform that lets you stream games to any Google device for a monthly fee. No console or gaming PC needed. So far, reviews from the press are mixed. Some say Stadia works pretty smoothly, but there are still a few improvements that will hopefully be made within months of the launch. A free version is expected next year. The free version of Amazon's music streaming service is now available on more devices. Variety reports customers can now use their mobile phones, the web, and Fire TV to listen to Amazon Music's top playlists in thousands of stations for free with ads. Before, it was only available through Amazon's voice assistant. CNBC reports the news of Amazon Music expanding sent stocks of Spotify down almost 5%. Spotify, of course, also offers a free ad-supported music service. And a quick extra note while we're talking about streaming music, country singer Luke Combs' latest album not only topped the Billboard chart this week, it also broke a streaming record. Songs from the album were streamed 74 million times, the biggest number for any country album ever. Coming soon, a greatest of all time Jeopardy showdown. The three people who have won the most money in the game show's history will play each other in January in prime time. Together, they've won more than $10 million, and now they'll be competing for a share of another $1.5 million. But USA Today says it won't be the typical format. It'll last days. There will be back-to-back games, which will lead to who wins a match, and the first to win three matches will get a million bucks. The runners-up will still get a quarter million apiece. Host Alex Trebek says this will be the best of the best. It all starts January 7th. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. And a big thank you to our Newsworthy Insiders. We so, so appreciate you supporting the show and helping to make it possible. If you're not an insider yet, you can learn more at thenewsworthy.com slash insider. 
And remember, you can always read more about any of the news stories we talked about in this episode. Just find the links and sources right in your podcast app or over on thenewsworthy.com slash show notes. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.